For more precise measurements, we're going to set our calipers down and move up in the world to micrometers, not to be confused with micrometers, okay? Now, the biggest difference, one of the differences between calipers and micrometers is that calipers can work across an entire range. Uh, these are eight inch calipers. They work from zero to eight inches. Now, micro, micrometers have a limited range, uh, usually one inch or 25 millimeters. Now, this set of micrometers, which covers zero to six inches, requires six different micrometers, zero to one, one to two, two to three, five to six, et cetera. The reason I mention this is that they, they are zeroed differently. And micrometers, the zero needs to be checked with every use, right? And so this is something that's important. Look, the spindle on these one inch or 25 millimeter mics can close all the way against the mic anvil, all the way to zero. And as I do that, it's a good time to check to make sure that there's no drag. Kind of like when we were opening and closing the calipers. As I close up these micrometers, if we feel a drag of any type, they might have been damaged and they might need repair. Or maybe the spindle clamp is tightened just slightly and needs to be released or at least cleaned up. You can use some micrometer oil and clean those spindles. To clean and check zero on these, we'll slowly tighten the mics, clamping against a piece of lint-free paper. Once lightly clamped, we can drag out the paper, which in turn cleans the measuring faces. And we can do this a few times. Now I've often used whatever random paper that's laying around uh, to clean my mics, but this is a bit dangerous. If the lint from regular paper gets stuck on the faces, it'll throw off all of our measurements. So lint-free paper is the way to go. Okay, all clean, no lint, time to tighten up these micrometers and check out our zero. Now, here's where we run across what might be the number one issue, cause of mistakes, when using micrometers. I'm talking about Gorilla Grip. If we over tighten these mics, our measurements can end up being off by quite a bit. In fact, if you are buying a set of micrometers, it's worth it to spend a little extra and get a force limiting device, like a ratchet stop or a slip clutch of some kind which help give us a consistent clamp, whether measuring a part or setting our zero. And it helps us prevent Gorilla Grip. Now for our digital mics, we'll just close them and origin them out, setting them back to zero. Now if we're using larger digital mics, these big ones, we can clean the measuring surfaces and origin them while clamped on a standard or on a gauge block. Now for checking zero on our analog mics, we'll do the same thing. They're all closed, ready to go, and they should read zero. If they don't read zero, then we have to adjust them. And to do that, we're gonna take the little, the little wrench, the little spanner wrench that came with the micrometers, and we're going to uh, lock it onto the sleeve and rotate it slightly until the, the lines line up, zero, zero. Now this doesn't have to be done often. Um, so if you're new to machining and you think your mics aren't reading correctly, grab a buddy and have them take a look at the mics before you make any adjustments. Again, that sleeve might be hard to turn if it hasn't been adjusted in a long time. Uh, so you might have to clamp it in a mic vise. Uh, you might actually have to tap on the, the, the spanner wrench just a tiny little bit with, uh, with a hammer. With our mics all zeroed out, we can measure a part. Now I'm going to grab these digital mics and uh, this part, and I'll I'll set it on here. We're gonna jiggle things to make sure everything's nice and square. We're gonna rotate our, our ratchet stop a few revolutions, click, click, click. And then there's our number, a 595 thou and two tenths. Now to get that same measurement with an analog mic, we're gonna have to read between the lines and do some addition. For inch micrometers, the main graduations etched on the sleeve are 100 thou apart, 0.1 inch, 0.2, 0.3, 4, 5, that's 0.5 inches. We haven't quite made it to 6. We haven't graduated to 0.6. The smaller graduations on the sleeve are 25 thousandths of an inch apart. 25, 50, 75. And we aren't quite to our next line yet, so we'll call this 0.575 so far. But wait, there's more. Now we move over to our thousandths graduations which are etched on the micrometer thimble. Our highest full line number is 20, so we just add this in. 0.595, 595 thou. Actually, we're just a little bit over that. We're kind of in between 595 and 596. So for higher precision, out to a tenth of a thou, 
we'll look over to these numbers, zero to nine, etched around the circumference of the micrometer sleeve. These markings are part of what we call a vernier scale, and uh, there's a secret code to them. Uh, they help us read between the foul lines, the graduations, on our thimble for, for higher accuracy, higher precision. For this vernier micrometer scale, all we do is look over all 10 numbers, zero through nine, and decide which one best lines up with the thou graduations on the thimble. Now, it doesn't have to line up with any particular thou line. Any one of them will work. It just has to, to line up well. Our eyes can play tricks on us, so we have to be careful to avoid parallax. Yep, just like that steel rule. We need to look straight down at those numbers. So finishing up our math lesson here, we have 0.5 plus 25, 50, 75, plus 20, plus 2 tenths, gives us 0.5952, 595 thou and 2 tenths. Metric micrometers are very similar, with graduations of 1 millimeter and half a millimeter on the sleeve. Graduations on the thimble every 0.01 millimeters, 10 micron, and a vernier scale on the sleeve, which lines up to an accuracy of 1 micron. We'll see these vernier tenth scales on lots of different kinds of micrometers. So it's something we really need to master. So that was some, some pretty solid instruction on calipers and micrometers, uh, our common tools. I'd like to quickly gloss over uh, 